Again, my name is Fanny Barrientos, and I'd like to welcome everybody to ProSite's presentation of how to get more patients from your website. Okay, in today's agenda, basically we're going to be covering why a website is important, just a brief go over that. Um, who is using your website? I think it's important to when you want, you know, figure out who is using your website so that you can optimize it to the best of your ability. We're going to break that down for you. I'm going to show you um, just some tips and tricks on how to create a better website from your pro site's website, and I will actually show you on my screen how to do that from our own uh, website editor. Um, I will be giving you some tips for local search engine optimization. You can't forget about the search engines, obviously. And then at the end, like I mentioned, I will be giving you a list of resources that you can refer back to after the presentation, and you can uh, dig in yourself. Okay, so let's just briefly go over why a website is important. Well, one, uh, to begin with, it's open 24-7. Um, you know, you people can learn about your business and submit questions, schedule appointments with your business, even if you're not physically in the office. Um, of course, people can call after hours, but, you know, sometimes it's easier for some people to go to the website and fill out a form. Um, it's easier maintenance. Uh, updates are less tacking to a website. They're instantaneous. Um, you know, and versus traditional marketing, you usually have to print something. You have to go over mock-ups, approve them, send them back to the publisher, get them printed out, sent back to you. So it's it's a, an investment that takes weeks on traditional versus a website, which is you know a matter of seconds. Um, a website is the cornerstone of digital marketing. Any digital marketing effort will involve your website to some degree. So it is something that you'll want to keep as the central hub to support all of that. And it's going to hold the majority of your information about your practice. Um, it's sort of an online representation of your brand. Essentially, it's your business in you know, the virtual world. Um, and so it should represent you and it's inspire the same confidence that your actual office environment would. Um, it provides information. You know, sometimes people call into your office to ask questions, and um, most people nowadays will actually research you before they will actually call in. So you want to give them the, op the ability to look you up and find information of you. And then, of course, ultimately it generates leads, meaning that it, it uh, brings in prospective patients. Um, and it allows pay people to easily find you online. Okay, so who is using your website? Let's talk about this a little bit and why this is important. So obviously potential patients are using your website. They're looking you up, they're finding your information, um, they're, they want to find out about you. And then obviously search engines. Search engines have to find your website and um, serve it up to people that have potential questions and that are, you know, Googling you or searching for you in, in whatever search engine they use. And so when you're thinking about your website, you really have to think about uh, providing information that potential patients will find valuable, but also providing optimizations that search engines will find valuable enough to rank above other websites and present to potential patients that are going to search engines to find you. So you have to think about both. So let's go over what it means for potential patients. Building a website for potential patients ultimately means a positive user experience on your website. And I do apologize if my voice starts to break a little bit during the presentation. Um, I'm just coming in and out of a cold, so please bear with me. So let's define user experience. User experience is the overall experience of a person using a website especially in terms of how easy or pleasing it is to use. Now, there are some contributing factors to user experience, and these can be break, broken down into these four factors. The first one being the design of the website. How does it look? The navigation. How easily is it to go around the website and find what you're looking for? Content. How relevant is the information on the website to whatever question I have as a pr prospective patient? And then finally, can I find, read, and understand the info using a mobile device? Uh, mobile is very, very important, and I'm going to mention that several times throughout this presentation. So just keep in mind that mobile trumps everything at the moment. Okay, so let's go over some design elements. 
Um, I as, as I was researching this, I found this very interesting quote and, uh, from uh, Drew Hendricks from Forbes.com. And he said that design elements are exponentially more powerful than content, meaning the copy on your website and the pictures, in terms of mistrust. When asked to describe why uh, people that were being researched mistrusted a website, 94% of the comments were directly related to web design elements, while only 6% referenced specific content, meaning that the design of your website has to make a good first impression. People will judge the website in under you know, three seconds and look at it and decide whether it's worth taking the time to look over it some more or just hit the back button and go back to their original search. So what are some elements that cause mistrust? Well, uh, busy or outdated layouts are, is one of uh, the bigger ones. Pop-ups or flashy ads, anything, I mean, we've all seen it, pop-up ads or, you know, flashy banner ads that sort of disorient you as you're reading. Um, small or difficult to read print. Boring design, something that usually lacks a little color, and um, on the opposite side of that, just obnoxious color a little bit too much. And then also slow load times, especially in this world when we want everything instantaneously. A rule of thumb is anything under three seconds that takes to load fully is just too long and people are going to hit the back button. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys an example of a website that, you know, at first glance it doesn't look too bad, but it could use some updating. Um, some elements here that I see could, that could use some improvements are the share buttons at the top. It's, it's not really, um, I guess, industry standard to put share buttons at the top because if you think about it, you're reading the website from top down. You don't really know if you want to share that content yet. Readers had it, haven't really decided that, so it's kind of a weird experience for a user to try and share something they don't really know is worth sharing yet. So the share buttons would probably be best moved down. Um, the other thing that stands out to me is it's kind of a monotone color scheme. Um, you know, there's purple and there's white and black. Um, it could use with a little bit of updating. There's really no dimension to the site. Also, you know, we can see from the banner across the top, I, you know, we all love smiling faces, but it might just be a little bit too much at once. And more importantly, I can see from the pixelation, you can see a little bit on the banner, especially if you look right here, um, you can see a little bit of a texture of, on that, and that's indicative of flash. And flash doesn't uh, display correctly on mobile devices, so this... Who knows how it's going to display on a mobile device. It might just look a little weird and push content in places where it doesn't make sense. So ideally, you want to stay away from Flash. That's just not the greatest on mobile devices. And it looks a little bit outdated. OK, so then I want to talk about navigation. Again, how easily can I find my way around a site? And um, I found this other interesting quote. and research that says research by the user interface engineering company shows that people cannot find the information they seek on a website about 60% of the time. And that's usually due to poor navigation experience. It's just, you know, they probably just can't find it under a specific, however the navigation is structured. Um, so what are some common mistakes when it comes to the navigation? Well, uh, using a non-standard style, usually the navigation on a website uh, standard is across the top on desktop and then vertical along the side on uh, left side on mobile devices. Um, that's pretty standard. Putting the navigation anywhere else is kind of weird. It's and it, it it makes things a little bit more cumbersome for people to use. Having too many items on navigation is also a common mistake. And the rule of thumb here is if it's more than seven, you probably have too many items on there. And so you, it would be best to condense the navigation as much as possible. And then having things in the wrong order. So anything that's on the, at the beginning of the navigation and at the end of the navigation bar are going to be your most important pages. It's very standard to have the contact either at the very end because most people will remember it. And just like with a presentation, you don't really tend to remember the middle. You just be, remember the beginning or the end. So it's the same thing with navigation. You just want to put your um, slightly less important items in the middle. And obviously, your contact information would be the most important because you want people to talk to you. So that would be best at the end. The overall rule for a proper navigation structure is to not make people think. And this is a quote that I pulled from 
Pamela Vaughn from HubSpot Marketing. Um, and really, you don't want people to think when they're using your site. You want it to be intuitive. You want it to be easy for them to use. OK, so moving on to content. Um, content is really referring to the copy and, and the uh, pictures that you have on your website. Now, there are, content is, a, is kind of a delicate balance because you want to have enough information, but not too much. So here are some common problems, the first one being um, content has no purpose. You want visitors to take a specific action on your page, which means that you'll want to include something that in the marketing world we call a CTA or a call to action. Tell people what you want from them. Do you want them to book an appointment? Say so. If you want them to contact you through email, say so as well. You know, make it very simple for them. Um, the next thing you want, uh, another th mistake that is commonly made is having too much copy. And this is what we refer to as a wall of text. Um, and so you want to make the copy on, on your pages easy to digest. You know, you want to be able to separate it with bulleted lists, uh, paragraphs, some images here and there. And the copy should be concise, digestible, and it gets straight to the point. Um, a way to sort of mitigate having too much copy on, a, on one single page is to link to other pages that are related to whichever topic your original page is talking about. But um, linking to another page will elaborate on a specific item on that topics and that way people know to go click through if they want more information. And this is also a really good technique for SEO. It's pretty standard for SEO. Okay, a couple more problems. Um, on the flip side of that, we have not enough copy. So some people get a little too, um, they, you know, they feel like they don't have enough copy on their on their website, they want to keep it really simple. But there is such a thing as being too simple. Sometimes um, people will miss on giving readers their value proposition, what makes you unique, what makes your practice valuable to the reader. So um, make sure that you have enough messaging in there so you get the message that you want across. So it, it really is a balance. Um, and it'll really be up to you to define what you feel is necessary. And then finally, having content that is sloppy is a big turnoff. It really um, sort of whittles into your credibility. It makes you seem less credible when, when people see grammatical errors or awkward wording or poorly articulated concepts on a single page. Um, it just really makes them think, well, if this is a professional, they should have professional reflect or content that is reflective of that, and the copy should be sound professional as well. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to use um, jargon from the industry. It just means that it should sound good. It should, you know, just standard English. It, it should just sound good. OK, so and then the next thing would be to have um, just making sure that your copy looks good on the page it's laid out well enough as well. OK, and then finally, um, most of you or basically all websites at this point really should be mobile um, again. Uh, mobile has quickly surpassed desktop traffic in the last couple of years, meaning that more people are using their iPhones rather than the laptop on their desk to search for uh, whatever it is that they need, including dentists. So you'll want to make sure that your um, website looks good on a mobile device. And here you can see um, an example of why you would want it to look good. It's, it's just a poor user experience, which is you can see from here. Um, here, the navigation is clearly visible. It's easy to use. You know what you're, you're clicking on these, or what you, you're getting if you click on these icons. Um, you know, it looks good, and you can read the copy. It's very easy to read. On the flip side, we have a non-mobile website. The navigation is a little cumbersome to use. There's you know, a lot of items on here. And that makes the buttons really small on a mobile device. So it makes it harder to use. The copy is also really small. And it's harder to read. Um, I mean, you can always pinch and zoom. But most people, they're used to having mobile websites. Even just pinching and zooming is too much time. And they're just not going to deal with it. So again, you want to be able to, you want to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. Okay, so now moving on to the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to incorporate all of these elements that I just talked about into your ProSite's website using our own 
web engine. And the first thing I want to go over is design. This one is actually my favorite because it's really easy to do. Here I go into my website editor. I click on the buttons, pages, underneath all of my pages. You'll see all of the different design styles that ProSites has to offer. And this is um, for our Future Now Assurance. So basically what Future Now Assurance means that your website will always stay up to date um, visually because we will continuously put out designs for you and it's absolutely free for you to update as much as you need to update it for. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, this design. So right now it shows me the one that I have. It's this brown one on the side with some flowers it looks like um, that you know I at this point I probably haven't changed my site style in a while I want something that's you know a little more modern looking more recent so I think I'm gonna go with this one I like this one so I'm just gonna hit select you can see it it renders up here on the side this is what um, it's gonna look like and then I just I'm gonna move up hit preview just to make sure that I, this is exactly what I want. Okay, it's not loading. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit publish. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to change the visual of it. And if you don't like it, you can always change it back to something else. Okay. And... I'm just going to go ahead and go to my website. Okay, there we go. And now that is my new style. As you can see, it is, there's a nice lady on there. You can, it already picks out all of my banners for me. There's my content. And by the way, every time you change this, you can change this as often as you like. It's not going to change any of the copy you've already implemented on your website. And here I can see this is what it's going to look like. I like it. I'm just going to leave it this way. Um, and you can play around with it as much as you like until you find something that works for you. And that's it. That's all design is. Um, okay, then moving on to navigation. So with navigation, let's see, how many items do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight, which is okay, but I kind of want to condense that a little bit, especially if it's on a mobile device. It's just better to have less uh, navigation buttons on there. So I'm going to go back to my um, website editor page, click on this button. Here are all of my pages that I have on my website. Okay, so let's say that I want to, let's see, let's go ahead and put the frequently asked questions under our practice. So it's this page I want to put this page underneath that page so that it removes it from what we call the top tier, so the very top of the page, and moves that page under here. I'm going to move this page up, and then I'm going to click on this little number one. What this is telling me is that it's a tier one page. And now I've made it a tier two, clicked on that, and you can see it indented, so now it tells me it's a tier two page. All right. Hit publish. Okay, so completed successfully. I'm just going to refresh the one I already had. And now you can see our practice underneath it, FAQs. And that's all it takes. You can condense as many pages as you would like. Um, uh, just make sure that you are keeping track of what you, you are doing so that um, you can find the pages and you know where they are. And then also um, just make sure that the contact page is always at the end. I would strongly recommend that. Okay, so moving on to content. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to add a page to uh, my website and I wanted to add a biography or meet the doctors as we would call it. That's easy to do as well. All you need to do is go to page options 
and then pick from any of these pages. Some of these pages were already templated for you, so we have an appointment request, a contact page, um, internet links, meet the team, our practice. Any of these pages would work, but um, I just want to put some simple content on there, so I'm just going to add a blank page. Okay. And then I'm going to choose the button name. This is the name that appears in the navigation, so I'm going to call it Meet the Doctor. Okay, and then page title is important for SEO. It basically tells search engines what the website is, or what that specific page is about. So I'm just going to name it um, Meet Dr. Barrientos. And then I'm going to put the name of my practice, Fanny Barrientos DDS. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and fill a meta description later. So I've already prepared some content that I want to use. It's right here. I, I did write it out on a Word document first, but you'll want to clear that because Word uses some markup language. So whenever you're copying and pasting from a Word document, you'll want to clear the coding or the markup language by just copying and pasting into a notepad. That way it just gives you simple text and it won't um, do something funny on the back end with the coding. Okay, so I've copied and pasted everything in. Here I'm just going to format it slightly, add some bulleted points. Let's just add some. some spacing. Again, we want to make this digestible. Okay, and here's my page. You can always take your time and spruce this up. I'm just going to put the copy on here. And then let's hit preview. And there it is, meet the doctor. There's all of the copy, the page I just added. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and hit publish. And going to navigate to it. Okay. There we go. Meet the doctor. Here it is. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is make sure that it renders on mobile. Um, this is actually really easy to use or really easy to see. If you take your website and you put it into Chrome, it really doesn't matter what page you're on, but we'll just go to the welcome page. And let's say I just want to make sure that it's a mobile compatible. All you do is you hit F12 while the page is selected on Chrome. You can ignore all of this on the side. It's not necessary. And then you just zoom into the whatever zoom you need. And it'll just default to an iPhone. And here I can see my responsive site has updated to a mobile device. This is what it will actually look like on an iPhone 5. And that's it. It's pretty easy to do on the website editor. We've, I'm, you know, our amazing developers have spent a lot of time to make sure that it's easy to use. So that's really all it takes to make sure that your ProSite's website is up to date. Okay, so let's move on to talking about search engines. Okay, now building a website for search engines is called SEO. It's search engine optimization. And really what this means is that search engines are looking at your website and websites linked to your own practice website to determine how relevant your information or your practice is to any given search query. So how relevant is my, your practice to the search, you know, dentist near me? And Google is going to look at a, a variety of factors, but in order for it to know that information and pull that information, it has to come from your website. And about 50% of local search ranking factors are dependent on a well-optimized website. 
and that's what we refer to as on page. So see, here are some of those factors. One is being mobile compatibility. That's actually now a ranking factor as of August 2014. Google announced that it was a ranking factor and your, goal, your website must be uh, mobile friendly. The next thing would be to um, include metadata and that was that title that I added to the page where I added meet the doctor and then I added my name. Um, that's called metadata, that's referring to metadata and then also we'll want to look at your meta description. That's not necessarily a ranking factor but it does help search engines understand your page. Your, web, your pro site's website already comes with um, a unique meta description and title tag on the welcome, procedures, and contact page. The anything else you'll want to add. So let's go back to meet the doctor and let's say that I want to add a meta description. The title tag is already there. I just want to add that. And this is not going to be evident copy that's evident on your page, but it's going to be pulled from search engines and displayed on the search engine results page. So let's say I want to say meet Dr. Barrientos in Temecula, California. Um, helping people in Southern California with their dentistry needs. We're going to say I'm a lot older than I actually am for over 25 years. Okay, there's your meta description. It includes a couple of keywords like dentistry, Southern California, Temecula, California. Um, again, it's not a ranking factor, but when this description is pulled into a search engine results page, if those words were used in any way in the search query, they will be bolded for people to read. All right, so I'm just going to, so there's your meta description. Okay, and then the next thing is going to be the copy. I've shown you how to update your copy. Um, you can always add a little bit of your own touch, a little bit of your own personality to the copy that is provided for you, but our copy that comes templated into the site is optimized for search engines. Um, when it was written, it's very, we were very cognizant of the keywords that would be needed to search that copy, so it's already included in there. The next thing would be the URL structure. This is not something that you need to worry about um, on your ProSite's website. That URL structure is actually updated for you every time you update your navigation or any of those pages, um, and it's already optimized for search engine. The next thing would be internal links. So linking from copy within the site from one page to another is something that um, search engines love because like readers, they follow that link to other pages and it makes it easy for them to find all of the pages within your website. Okay, so let's move on to a few more tips for to implement for local SEO. The first one will be to claim and verify your Google Maps listing. At the end of this presentation, there is a resources section that um, links to YouTube tutorials to help you do that. And basically what you're doing is taking the information that is on Google Maps and you're telling Google, yes, this is my business, this is what I, you know, all of the information is right on this particular listing. And um, it'll, Google will take you through a verification process through the phone, so it'll call your business phone number have you add a PIN number and then confirm that your business is working through that phone call and then you can update your business information to make sure that um, there's a description, the map marker is correct and um, especially on the map because that's actually what drives Google Maps and GPS directions so you want to make sure that that little red bubble over the map is over the right building. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is to update your contact page with your NAP info. NAP is uh, an acronym that we use in the SEO world, which, which means name, address, and phone number information. You want to make sure that, that is prominently shown with business hours and make sure to embed your Google map um, and include social media icons to web profiles. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is to keep track of your Google Analytics. Google Analytics will tell you where your traffic is coming from, whether it's organic, 
from search engines. If you're doing PPC, it'll tell you how much traffic is coming from there. If you're doing anything in uh, with social media, it'll tell you if it's coming from there, and even email, um, basically anything. So like I said, your website is the cornerstone of all digital marketing, all of your digital marketing efforts. And you want to make sure that you can see that, and Google Analytics is one way to do that. And it's absolutely free. Um, with every ProSite's website, it's actually already implemented. All you have to do is ask for access to your profile. It's already there. Um, and then the next thing you'll want to do is to update all title tags in your website. Like I said before, your website at the very beginning when it was purchased was updated with uh, title tags in the welcome page, the procedures page, and the contact page. Um, those are already there for you, but all the other pages, anything you add or take away, your title tag is going to have to be updated. And you'll want to make sure to mention any keywords that people use to search your business and are relevant to the page. All right, the next thing is to update with a constant stream of content. So search engines love fresh new content on websites, and that doesn't mean that you need to change your website around too much. It just means that blogging is a great you know, thing that you could implement on your uh, website. So just set up a blog um, and start writing. Um, it's recommended that you write a post once a month at the very least. So you know, it would be very wise for you to take some time and, and figure out a, a plan for that to update your website with blog content. Um, the next thing is to personalize your pages. I mean, we already give you the bulk of the content for your procedures, but it's always nice to add a personal touch. It's just a better user experience. It's uh, for people that are searching for you to get to know you and understand you. So, you know, a lot of people like to put a face to the name. So adding a personal page like Meet the Doctor is a great way to do that. Um, also, anywhere else on the site, you know, add a little bit more, highlight some of the procedures that you like to do and you would like to show up for in search engines by adding bulleted lists and include those services or link, you know, and linking to other pages that talk about those services. And then obviously, you know, you can talk about your practice and what's going on through your blog if you decide to implement that. And then um, finally, you can you should leverage your network to encourage backlinks to a website. So a backlink is um, a hyperlink from any other website in, that's not your own, and it connects back to your own website. That's what we call backlinks. Um, in order to do completely white backlink, white hat backlinks, what we refer to as, you know, in SEO, um, you'll, you can leverage your network and whatever it is that you're doing in the community to encourage that connection from wherever it is that you're uh, volunteering from their own websites back to your own. So let's say that you're going to an elementary school and you're teaching a class about um, dental hygiene. So um, let's say they, you know, put it up on their school calendar that they have on their, you know, elementary school website. If you can ask them to write it, you know, maybe write a description, give that to them and include a backlink or a hyperlink back to your own website and have them implement it on theirs, on their school calendar, that's a backlink. And what that does is it shows search engines that you are locally relevant because most likely that school isn't around your community or within your community. And it also um, gives some credibility to your website because you're out in the community and you're giving presentations about dentistry and most likely that description will talk about dentistry. So, you know, um, any opportunities you have to have someone link back to your site, take them and ask for them to implement that. Okay, so here's the resources section that I promised you guys. Um, here's a list of, of recommended blog posts that we have written and that I really recommend uh, for you to get look over. It goes into more detail on how you can improve your website for SEO. Um, and it gives you some news, some updates that have been happening in the SEO world. And I also strongly recommend that you go to these YouTube tutorials here. It will walk you through claiming um, your Google Maps listing. That's probably one of the easiest and most overlooked um, SEO tactics that I've seen from dentists. So it's, you know, I would strongly encourage you to do that uh, as soon as possible if you haven't already. And then finally, um, I'll encourage you to follow us on social media so we can provide you with even more resources. We always update our social networks with upcoming 
um, content to help you with your digital marketing strategies. So, you know, please feel free to follow, especially, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, um, and we'll update you with any, any industry news. And then finally, I wanted to include um, some these apps and links to apps which you can download on your own phone. It should help you. Um, it should help you uh, update your social media pages and also your your social presence and your um, off online presence other than your website. Um, and it, you can do it on the go. So here I have a, an app. This is a link to an app, whether it be from Android or Apple, whichever phone you use. And it'll take you straight to the app so that you can download it on your phone and start managing your, your Google My Business listing, your Facebook page, your Yelp, and your Twitter. I um, would strongly recommend, I mean, we're all on the go, so I would really recommend downloading these so that you can uh, respond to any questions that you may receive on social media so that you can update on a flash or, you know, it just makes things a lot easier so you don't have to take time out of your schedule to go to a desktop and update everything from there. Okay, and at this point, I would like to thank everybody for joining us. Um, this is the end of the formal presentation, but I will be taking questions, any questions that have popped up in the panel. And um, I am, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us, um, see if maybe we can help you update some website elements if you haven't been in there in a while. Um, uh, we'd be very happy to help you. And you can always talk to an account advisor if you're interested about learning in any of our other services like social media or SEO or PPC. Um, thank you all for coming. And at this point, I'm going to be taking some questions. So let's see. The first question I can see is, let's just go over. Oh, how frequently can I update my website design? This one's a really good one. Um, you can update it as much as you like. <laughs> you can always go back and change the site style is what we refer to it. I would strongly recommend that you go to anything that has a number of 2000 and up. Those are some of our more recent ones and they look really nice. Um, our developers have spent a lot of time making sure that those look very presentable and professional. So I would recommend those. Um, let's see, the next one is, how long does it take to verify my business listing on Google? It takes, at most, 15 minutes. Um, just find whatever listing you want to verify, if you haven't already, and then just go through the process. And by watching those tutorials, you'll see that it's very easy to do, and Google will walk you through the entire thing, through their step-by-step -step process. Um, just make sure that you're in the office as you're doing this. Um, another thing that I would recommend as you're um, updating your website is to make sure that all of the forms on your website are going to your uh, an email address that you currently use. Um, sometimes people will fill out those forms and it'll contact you, but um, it may not be an email address that you are currently using or looking at, so you know you may not get those messages. So I would strongly encourage you to go back and make sure that those forms are working. And you can always call into our amazing customer service team, and they'll help you troubleshoot that if you you know can't take the time or if you wouldn't want to do it yourself. Let's see if we. Okay, so um, here's a good question. Is it needed to change my website style and how often does it help SEO? Okay, um, let's break that down. How often do you need to change your website style? As often as you feel you need to. Um, if you're if you haven't changed it in I would say more than three years, I would probably go back and take a look to see if there's anything else that you can do or if there's any other designs that you would like to have. Um, does it help SEO? In a sense, it does, indirectly. Again, design is very important for users and their experience. If users do not like your design or for whatever reason, they tend to go back to, the, to their own search and don't spend very much time on it, search engines can see that. They see that users are having a negative experience on your site, so they're less likely to recommend your site and by putting it on search engine results pages. So yes, it kind of does indirectly. Let's see, does ProSites? 
Um, does ProSites offer option to upload new patient forms? I'm actually not sure about that question, but I'd be very happy to get you an answer immediately after this presentation. Oh, it looks like it does. And let's see who... So the best person to contact to review any of your website elements would be your member service representative. You can reach them by emailing at service at prosites.com and giving your domain, they'll find you. And then you can um, also just call in, give your domain, and they will, uh, our front service person will direct you to your member service representative and they can talk, and they can walk you directly through whichever question you have. Okay, at this point it looks like the questions are slowing down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and end the presentation here. Again, thank you very much for hanging, um, staying on the line with me. Um, I will still stay on and I uh, will take any other questions that are written in here. But at uh, this point, this will end our formal presentation. Thank you so much for joining. Have a good one.